Greetings, everyone, or a very warm welcome to another edition of Marketing the Invisible. My name is Tom Poland, beaming out to us always from little Castaways Beach uh, on the sand here next to the blue ocean on the Pacific. Joined today by another Tom from around the other side of the world. Tom, uh, g'day, sir. Very warm welcome. Where are you hanging out? Thank you so much. It's the Tom Show today. I'm <laughs> here in Wolverhampton in the UK. Perfect. England's doing very well in the European uh, Football Championship, I see. Good. More power to them. Yes. Um, hopefully, hopefully, the good good news in the final on Sunday. Hopefully, we'll cross cross lots of fingers for you. Uh, yeah. So long as you let us win the rugby, we don't mind if you win the soccer. Okay. All right, exactly. <laughs> it's a deal. So for those of you who are not aware of Tom, uh, Tom and I have known each other for quite some time now. He's the founder of Succeed Through Speaking, and ironically, spent the first twenty five years of his life avoiding a public speaking in any way, shape or form. But so he's really well qualified to help entrepreneurs, experts, coaches, consultants use speaking to raise their profile and generate new clients. Tom, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I can't wait for this. I'm looking forward to it with real interest. Title today is How to Get Your Message to Market with Confidence and Clarity. Our seven minutes starts now. So question number one is who's your ideal client? Thanks for having me, Tom. So you pretty much nailed my ideal clients there. It's experts, entrepreneurs, consultants, and coaches who are typically either solopreneurs or maybe they've got one or two VAs in their team. Perfect. Thank you. And so question number two, six and a half minutes left. What's the problem you solve for them? So the typical problem is that they're the world's best kept secret. And what I mean by that is that they're normally amazing at what they do. They can provide such great value, but nobody knows that they exist. And it's either because they're too scared to go on camera, they've been putting off starting a podcast for the past eight years, <laughs> and, or they're just avoiding going on a webinar or delivering presentations as well. And it's typically, like me, due to a fear of public speaking or just some limiting beliefs that are holding them back. Perfect. Thank you, sir. So you've question number three, and we've got six minutes left, so we're doing well. Question number three is, what are some of the symptoms that they're experiencing? And you've mentioned a couple. There's perhaps a fear of public speaking that's holding them back. How else is someone going to sort of have a look at their business, have a look at their life and go, I need to listen up a bit more closely to this? What, what's happening for them? Yeah, well, I think the best best way to position this is because I was my first client, as you mentioned, <laughs> and I, I did spend the first however many, 28 years, I think it was, avoiding public speaking. Um, and it really did hold me back in terms of relationships, in terms of career. Mm. It, helped, it held me off from starting my own business for about seven years and then when I did eventually launch it, I didn't want to tell anybody about it because I was, again, scared of their opinions or judgment. Right. And I think to answer your question, the biggest symptom is um, inaction or, or lack of action, really due to the fear of other people's opinions on us. Right. So they're, they're aware of the potential to generate clients through speaking, but they're concerned yeah. that when they do the speaking, people are going to be criticizing and judging. And maybe yeah, maybe family. they will themselves as well. Yeah, exactly. It could All be family, right. could be friends, could be past colleagues. Um, you know, they've got a fear of what other people's opinions of them will be. Right. All right. That, that's interesting. Thank you for that. Just under five minutes left. So we're, t- we're talking about people. Who, I mean, the business coaches and consultants are generally quite smart people, and they're ambitious, mm-hmm. and they're going to be aware that they've got this critical voice in the back of their head, imagining what other people are going to be thinking. So they're going to try stuff. So question number four is. What are some of the common things that they try that turn out be, to be mistakes? Yeah, so from my typical experiences is that they are all too often, instead of being the face of their business, they'll hide behind their business. Ah. And what I mean by that is they're typically posting faceless, inauthentic content on social media. So, you know, you see people posting quotes from other people every single day. Ah, um, right links to articles from other experts every single day. And ultimately we spend hours on social media creating this content, but none of it's actually authentic from from the heart. And so I think the challenge here is that, you know, how, how do we get our clients in front of their ideal clients with authority, with positioning, with credibility? And for me, it's in the form of sharing and value videos, podcast episodes, free webinars, um, you know, standing on stages, speaking, presenting. Yep. And really, instead of being, instead of posting other people's content, it's to be the face of your business. 
scary but potentially incredibly liberating absolutely yeah so thank you for that um just over three minutes left question five is can you give us audience listeners one valuable free action that it's not going to solve the whole problem but it might take them a step in the right direction of course i think what they need to do is, is really take note of what you and me are doing right now so Tom, as the, um, as the host of your own podcast, you know, you're showing up online as the expert or authority in your niche and um, because ultimately you're the figurehead of your brand. And for me, I'm showing up today as an expert. I've been brought here today or sourced to bring some expertise to your followers. And, yep. and then equally, I, I have my own podcast show as well, whereby I can show up as the authority on my show. So what are we doing right now? We're using public speaking, presenting. We're using positioning to put ourselves in front of our market as an expert or authority. And if my clients had any fear around this, then the starting point would be to do audio only and just right. to interview experts to right. get your voice out. And it could be a very, it could be a structured way that feels a lot safer for people to dip their toe into the speaking water, so to speak, pardon the pun. Um, so let's, yeah. let's help people even some more. So, so question six, 10 minutes left one mm -hmm. valuable free resource you could direct people to that's going to it's going to give them some more free stuff to help them get stuck into this perfect thank you so much for asking so i run a monthly live demonstration or masterclass it is on the first thursday of the month at 4 p.m uk time and we dive into how you can become a fearless speaker how you can get your message to market with confidence and clarity and how that will help you raise your profile and attract new clients. Brilliant. The, What's the URL, the registration page? Yes, yeah, so the best place to find it is quite simply on the homepage of my website, which is www.succeedthroughspeaking.com. But Tom, I'll also, sh I'll also share a, a link with you if you can just drop that into the show we notes. We will pop sure. it into the show notes for sure. Succeedthroughspeaking.com on the homepage there, there is a link to register for, for the upcoming webinar. Thank you, sir. At question number seven, we've got one minute left. What's the one question I should have asked you but didn't? I think the main question that comes up is around the fear of public speaking. You know, where does it come from and, and what right. can I do about it? And the biggest thing for me with fear is that it normally shows up as what if questions linked to the presentation or the video. So ah. it could be what if I make a mistake? What if I forget my lines? What if the technology fails on me like it did for me today? <laughs> yes. um, what if I embarrass myself? And, you know, ultimately a lot of these questions will stop us in our tracks. So what I like to do is turn them on their heads and say, well, you know, what if you did forget your lines? What could you do about it? What could you do to prepare more to ensure that you don't forget your lines? And if you did forget them, what could you do to rectify the situation? So ultimately it's just trying to reduce the fear of these what if questions by creating some what could happen if we took this opportunity. Perfect. Mitigate the risk, mitigate the fear. Tom Bailey, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Thanks for checking out our Marketing the Invisible podcast. If you like what we're doing here, please head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate us and leave us a review. It's very much appreciated. And if you want to generate five fresh leads in just five hours, then check out www.marketingthinvisible.com. 5hourchallenge.com